one of the things I think this industry affords us is the privilege to work with many different cultures in many different places. The proverb that was used to be uh, repeatedly uh, said by one of my colleagues in PD Oman who, keeps, he, who said, workers respect what supervisor inspect. If supervisor inspects production, they will respect production. If he respects safety, they will respect safety. I have never seen in my, in my career some people doing bad things voluntarily. Generally, they are doing by lack of knowledge, lack of experience. Two tools in line with uh, our any approach, and especially in uh, focuses on uh, leadership, behavior, and uh, accountability with uh, a full engagement of company managers and contractors. We have so many tools with us, but after getting this feedback, we are thinking to revisit these tools to, more, to make them more strengthened, to benefit the organization, to embed this safety culture within the organization itself. What they personally need to do to drive forward the culture within the organization so something that is very, very targeted to the individual. The best way is to recognize, and it is also uh, to recognize the best practices a bit more than it is done today. And uh, to keep in mind that the sanction is also uh, to, to be seen in the positive direction, not only in the negative direction. We have a well-established system called Green Hand. In addition to that, actually, uh, Getting them introduced to our culture, uh, it is a non-blame culture. However, they are empowered actually to report, to stop any un un unsafe act, and also to contribute towards uh, achieving or sustaining our excellence in, in HSC performance. What started as a dream for us some years back is maturing today to become a realistic vision. Of course, all this research and development of the technology cannot be done with, without any people. People are the key element, talented people are the key element in this system. More and more in the oil and gas industry I see this divergence between people that really know how things work and people that have a good understanding of how things operate. This is a small round thing, this is a gas chromatograph. And this gas chromatograph, uh, so it is very much uh, miniaturized. Maybe in the next future it will be only the size of the small square in the, in the center. We cannot do research without uh, a talented manpower. And we have to capture the, the talented people and to, to try to bring them to our business in order to develop our research and our uh, innovation trial and error that we have gone through is expensive and it's probably not the best solution for this place. You learn a lot through deployment and that's, and, and that's changed the game for us because as we learn for deployment we go back and we make the products even better and we're working with vendors and suppliers. Mm -hmm. I think passion is very important in R&D. Without it, many of the technologies would have been killed probably from day one. If you're an operator, your asset is in the ground. If you're a service company, your asset is in your people and your technology. We see the IP not always in the technology, but in the ability to, to implement it, you know, and, and how to make it work. The solution is simple. We must increase our recovery factor to meet demand, and we must do this quite soon. In the end, it's people that make it happen. Technology and the latest GPS tools are only as good as the engineers, the geologists, and the scientists who use them. Let's try to accelerate, but in a, in, a, in, a in a good manner for the other new technologies. And we have to put the resources for that. It's not enough to say a pilot here, a pilot there. We have to put the resources that will enable earlier application of an EOR that can give us more information for the future. It's not all about technology. There are a lot of other factors which play an enormous role when it comes to increased oil recovery. We can revise this technology and uh, produce more reserve if we adapt some new methodology. We don't need to wait for a 20-year plan or 20-year field development plan. Maybe we can improve the recovery factor a few percentage on your existing plans. There's a lot to be done with clever use of existing IOR technologies. It's not one solution. It's not only IOR or EOR. 
they have to be combined. For some other reservoir, we will need to inject uh, uh, what I will call smart water. But it's really the courage to actually go for it and, and indeed ultimately go for the big projects coming after. The more we get the younger generation who's coming in the field and not necessarily in the research center or in the study groups to be involved and to understand what only they are doing as operation but what is behind it, why they are doing, maybe we get out of those some geniuses who would come with new ideas.